Welcome to York Reacts. Today we're going to be checking out the Unreal Tech demo for Fortnite. Now this is kind of a, a new technology that they've been using recently to allow players to build their own maps inside of Fortnite. It's really awesome stuff that, you know, Epic Games and the Unreal Engine is allowing people to kind of use the engine in general for free to create all these cool games for people to play. And they came out with a new demo with MetaHuman and stuff at the uh, Unreal Tech demo at the State of state of unreal i think it's called so i'm really excited to check this out if you are new to my channel i'm a game developer as well i've been working in the industry for a little over 15 years worked on some cool games like gta 5 and red dead 2 and all kinds of cool stuff so i'm trying to give a cool breakdown on this and we'll see how this kind of plays out hopefully i can give some insights that you don't see on another channel so let's dive in and take a look so for the next stage of Fortnite, and ultimately the open metaverse that epic is building towards we need tools to solve for interoperability, scalability, and resilience. That is what led us to develop Verse, a powerful programming Verse. language that we released um. last year. And since we introduced Verse, we've added loads of new features, persistence, runtime error telemetry, incremental garbage collection, and we're continuing to move as fast as we can. And on top of that, this year we're introducing that we are building a scene graph system built right on top of the Verse language. It's an entity and component framework that enables you to dynamically manipulate objects in your game. The system is designed to be simple, easy to learn, and eventually powerful enough to build AAA game content. Huh. And an important point about the scene graph is that while it's coming first to UEFN, it will eventually become the foundation for all content built in the OVL engine. Interesting. Starting with an ex experimental version. You know, I, I'm not a coder or a programmer, so I, I don't know how, uh, <laughs> how to code per se, but... Um, one thing I like about the Unreal Engine is there's less coding to do, sort of. There's less things to look at that look like this. A bunch of crazy text and whatever. Like, dude, this is the type of stuff that makes me not want to make games. I don't like this type of stuff and coding and program. That's why, that's why I'm an animator. I love to create and I love to kind of do things visually, not get stuck in like code like this. So this kind of feature to me, I could care less about almost. For all content built in the OVL engine. I'm sure it has a great purpose for it, but not something... I'm sure it has a great purpose, but it's not something I want to kind of spend my time doing while I'm developing a game, you know? Next couple of months, with the goal of SceneCraft being available to all creators in UEFN by the end of the summer. If you want to learn more, we have a SceneCraft talk tomorrow at 4 p.m. over at the Moscone. So, next, this Look year we're this. also going to be enabling <laughs> physically cool. simulated characters in UEFN. Okay. And creative. And the ability to dynamically simulate any awesome, static dude. Cash. So this is basically the Lego Fortnite physics and Look at construction system off. that we worked oh, really hard cool. on that now are being released broadly for all creators. They're really giving the uh, creators the ability to make all kinds of cool stuff in a game, and now it's there's no more excuses of like, um, oh, we don't have the technology to make what we want to make. We're super excited about the potential of true networked physics sandbox gameplay to oh, enable creators cool. to make interactive and emerging games that were previously <laughs> oh, not that was cool. Fortnite. So beyond the, the technical capabilities of the tools, just as important as, as making your game is finding your game. You could make a really cool physics simulation game, you know, with this, like a, uh, I forget what it's called, Rupert's, uh, Rupert, uh, God, I don't. Rube Goldberg, that's what it is, Rube Goldberg machine. And basically, like, have one thing drop, and then everything cascades from that, you know? creators to make interactive and emerging games that were previously <laughs> not possible in Fortnite. <laughs> Pretty cool. So beyond the, technic the technical capabilities of the tools, just as important as making your game is finding your game. Yeah. We saw new islands published in Fortnite go from 50 islands a day to well over 500 brand new experiences published every single day in Fortnite. Wow. So... In, in discoverability is a key focus of ours. The goal is to give every island a chance to find an audience. Hmm. We've already done a lot over the last year to improve Discover, and now we're gonna be adding features and functionality specifically to the creator pages, including ability to follow creators, link out to social media platforms, and make it much, much easier for you to build your own distinct creator community. Hmm. So, we've talked about I'm glad that they're making things easier for the creator or more robust in the sense that like, you know, one thing that's hard to do or hard like on, when you're on YouTube or different things is getting discovered. So I'm glad that they're helping with that. We have in 2024, there's a much deeper roadmap talk tomorrow that I encourage you to go and see in Moscone. 
but let's talk a bit about like what are we doing next for our first party development here at Epic. So we've always used our own games to push the engine forward, make sure it's battle tested for creators. Mm -hmm. And it's time for Fortnite development to move over to UEFN and Verse. By the end of 2025, we're huh. going to ship our first season of Fortnite Battle Royale developed in UEFN. Okay. So by moving our primary development to UEFN and Verse, our aim is to accelerate feature development and ultimately result in a much more robust toolset for all developers. That, that's a good point. Okay, so what he's saying, what's great is that they're, them as a company, okay, usually a company has like their own secret software and, or they have their own little things, tools that they use that nobody else can use. But what they're saying is that like they're trying to dedicate themselves to using the UEFN software to make the entire Battle Royale season developed completely in that software so that to prove to everyone that you can make something like they're making um, in, the, in the program. And what it means to everybody that, that chooses to, to use UEFN is that this is us ensuring that you're going to be able to build experiences See? at the level and depth and quality of Battle Royale going forward right inside Fortnite. Oh, wow. Awesome, dude. So there's a lot more coming for creators in 2024. That Some of cool. those features are much better shown in person and in a live demo. Let's see it. Just talking about them. Thank so you. Why don't we welcome Pat and Michael to the stage, and they can show you more. All right, Pat. Everyone. All right, thank you, Sax. You mentioned the evolution of UBFN, and now we'd like to share a project that we've been using to drive that progress. Hey, Michael. Hi, everybody. Here we are running live in UBFN, and Look Michael's playing for us. We're surrounded by just a handful of the prefab buildings and props you can find in the content folder of every project. But if you can't find the exact theme or the wow, art style look at this. After, looks pretty cool. you're going to need to customize And you know what? For example, I can see the new walk. So in UE5, I think, there's like a walk that they give you, and it looks just like this. Well, what if you wanted to make a game set on a classic 1970s style sci-fi spaceship? Let's step into this rift and show you what can happen. What? Welcome wow. to the Talisman, a deep space cargo vessel. We built this ship to show you how unique your world can look when you create high quality custom assets and bring them into your UEFN experience. Jeez. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Can we get Bright Bomber back? We still need a player to help us look around. I think she should be dropping in soon. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not the most elegant entrance ever, but she made it. And now we can start to explore the ship. <laughs> nice. Straight away, we're switching off the Fortnite HUD with the HUD controller device so we can show you more of our environment. Look at this. As Sax mentioned earlier, Dang. cameras are also one of the things that can be customized in UEFN. For example, with the new Orbit camera device, we can push way in, past the player entirely. Let's use this camera to explore the crew quarters. Okay. <laughs> nice. All right, this view allows you to focus more on what the player's looking at, and it's helpful if you're interested in making more narrative-style games. Dang, it just looks so right, real. We compromise and back out halfway so we can see more of our player again. All right, Damn. Great. Now we're moving across the hall to the common room in the galley. I'm excited for you to see the complexity of lighting in these rooms. Yeah. We're optimizing for lumen by selectively disabling wow. shadows, reducing light overlap, and swapping in light functions Dang. for geometry shadows. This looks so dope. Customizing the look and feel of your UEFN game is going to be a consistent... All the neons and the spill light that's going on. ...in 2024 and beyond. Combining release devices and verse oh. code as we are here gives you the control and the freedom to make your experience unique. That verse code you just saw actually has to do with assigning our player a quest. We're going to trigger it using several standard devices. But instead of going back to the Fortnite UI, we've styled the pop-up messages and the maps to fit our sci-fi experience. All right, you'll notice there's a waypoint on the map for us now. This is great. So we've got a mission to find our crew, so let's get moving. They're really worth noting. They're really putting, you know, some amazing tools in the hands of developers right now. Even though we're showcasing a tremendous amount of detail inside the ship, the total environment still checks in under 200 megs. Wow. It's incredible that you can get this level of visual detail in that size profile. Yeah. And to <laughs> achieve this, we're relying on a combination of mid-poly kit bash parts fully procedural materials, and mesh decals. Mm. With efficient build techniques, Whoa. you can make big games fit into small packages. Wow. All right, according to our mini-map, our objective's waiting for us on the other side of that door over there. Let's go check it out. Oh, that's cool. 
Here we go, metahuman. Wow. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you, and we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. Not too bad. Metahumans are now available for import into UEFN as non-player characters. <laughs> Whoa, what did he just say? Import into UEFN as non-player characters. Metahuman characters can now be brought into Unreal as non-playable characters. That's pretty cool. So NPCs in your world and different things can be metahuman. And metahuman can really take advantage of some amazing technology. Uh, I don't think people realize how great it is. Yeah, like... And right now, let me just, you know... Let me slow motion this here. Let me break it down slow motion for me. Slow motion for me. Slow motion for me. Okay, so... It's still got that uncanny valley feel. She's got that stare on her face and her teeth and mouth still kind of move a little bit rough. I don't know what it is, but this isn't polished, right? This is probably just straight up metahuman out of the can. It's not bad. It looks pretty good, but it's still kind of like a puppet and then a doll. And it still has that weird uncanny feeling just a little bit. The mouth. I don't know what it is. I think it's just mainly inside the mouth. But what's incredible is that they're going to allow this technology to come to all the kids, all the people that want to make this. I mean, it's not just kids, and but you know what I'm saying. Anybody who wants to have a chance at bringing MetaHuman into their game for this, you know, UEFN, this Unreal stuff, is can do that now. It's really, really, really incredible. Look at this. As you can see, we carefully optimize for both quality and efficiency. Look at We've that. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs. Whoa, no way. How? An average complexity hairstyle. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. Holy to shit. To save your custom metahumans and the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Rue metahuman preset. Oh, how cool. Once you have your creations saved in my metahumans, they'll be available to you in our new metahuman importer. Oh, that's awesome. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Oh, I need to play around with this. Now, we can't talk about metahumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. Thank there you. There are many ways to author clothing, but in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, oh. a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3 d to integrate our metahuman body data into their software. Oh, that's and cool. And provide a new USD export option oh, for your garments. Oh, nice. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Wow. Awesome, now man. On screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported for Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4. What? And from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that mm -hmm. have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming UE 5.4, huh. we're introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data and ingest, auto LOD generation, and auto skinning. Dang. Addition, you always have Hold on. Do you guys don't hear that. People are not even... <laughs> I don't think people are comprehending what is happening right now. <laughs> auto LOD generation, auto skinning. These type of things, you know, a couple years ago were not even a thing, right? It wasn't even, it wouldn't even come out of this guy's mouth. Like, like auto skinning and, and, and auto LODs. All these things had to be created by hand by an artist and, and meticulously done. Um, and it would take weeks to do it. And it's really amazing to see where we've come now because we've now come to a point where a lot of the stuff that used to take a lot of time for an artist to kind of to do is now you can just push a button or it's done automatically for you. And it's really going to change the way we make video games. It really, really is. Okay, cloth physics are available in UEFN as early access starting today. Starting today. I'd like to show you how easy it is to dress a MetaHuman character. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the default outfit that came in from MetaHuman Creator. Wow, look Next, at this. Next, we'll add a new uh, Chaos Cloth component. Chaos Cloth. This allows cloth. us in place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. Oh. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, That's cool. add a new animation. So we can see how the cloth moves. Then we come down to the cloth. Look how simple that was. And Drag and like drop. That. We have moving cloth here inside UEFN. Wow, dude. Incredible. 
Look at that, incredible. All right, cool. So from there, our MetaHuman's ready to be used in the game. So We're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. Yeah, it is. And what's really cool is they're using Marvelous Designer, which is one of the best programs you can use to kind of to sculpt clothing and make clothing. So that's <laughs> really We're impressive. Not limited to clothing our characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. Yeah. At last year's State of Unreal, you saw the power of MetaHuman Animator in UE, and we're pleased to say that those same tools are now available to creators in UEFN. Wow. And don't forget, using our latest character device, you can also add a performance to some of your favorite formats. Look at that, you just drop them in. You might have seen this in the recent Joke Night experience it's produced by Trevor Noah. For getting capture data into UEFN, we recommend using our new Live Link Hub app. Wait, what? This allows almost all capture devices. Oh, to that's so cool. UE5, to also stream directly into UEFN and get recorded there. Oh, nice. Even more third-party devices will be supported in Live Link Hub soon. Oh, What's next for the talent is dude. really up to you as creator. It's just one example of the many worlds that you might be dreaming of building for your next game. Oh, There's man. A workflow you can use to make compelling characters and a much clearer path for Look at the world. environments he created with this. Really looks really cool. MetaHumans as NPCs and cloth physics are available in UEFN today and the Talisman uh, environment is playable in our booth here at GDC. It'll be released as a template soon. Awesome, dude. We also have a tech talk here at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon that explores the techniques we use to create this project. Thank you. Sax, turn things back over to you. Nice, that was really, really great. You know, um, all these tech demos, all they really do is make me wanna make my own game. <laughs> because, you know, I've been, struggling as a game developer working for all these companies over the years for almost 15 you know over 15 years now and every process of the game it's so hard and difficult to do and 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 tedious and now things are changing to make it easier for us as developers to to make a game and i'll tell you what this meta human thing has completely changed it for me and for all developers and i think that like now more than ever is the time to jump in and make your own game and make your own project and use this metahuman stuff and play around with this. If you've ever wanted to make a game before, right now is the time to jump in and do it. Oh man, geeking out. I hope you guys enjoyed this little reveal trailer, uh, you know, this Unreal Engine kind of breakdown that they're doing, revealing kind of the new technology that they're using for UEFN. So go download it, have some fun with it. Let me know what you guys think of the whole process of, of making the game with this software. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you're using it and, and if you're having fun with it. So thank you so much for your time and support. If you have some more time, which I think you probably do, stay a little while, watch some of my other videos. I have all kinds of stuff in gaming. I also have animation breakdowns of cinematics. I've worked on games and I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights, 9 to 11. So I hope to see you guys there. I'll catch you guys in the next